Someday, in the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, April the 27th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters coming to you from the Barber Motorsports Park and the home of the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the weather. The upper atmosphere pretty much uh, tells the story. We've got a large a lumbering low pressure area, a closed low located over the Oklahoma, Texas panhandle area and uh, just to the southeast of Denver. That is going to be lumbering and twirling around just to the east of the Rockies for the next uh, several days, and that's part of the problem. Temperatures this morning uh, are generally in the 60s across central Alabama. Notice also that the dew points have come up substantially. Yesterday we were in the lower 50s, upper 40s. Today we're in the lower 60s and mid-60s over there, Tuscaloosa. So uh, moisture has increased rapidly. The result is that we do have a lot of clouds across the area. And there's a band of showers and thunderstorms that stretch from just to the northeast of Jackson all the way up into central Arkansas. There's a slightly different look, and you can see some of those uh, thunderstorms in the vicinity of uh, Jackson. There's a look at uh, the current radar just uh, at the time I was making this, so keep in mind it has changed. There's uh, also the wide view of the radar, so uh, lots of showers and thunderstorms. But this is not the main event. The main event is still off. Besides the severe weather threat, we also have the threat of heavy rains over the next five days. Those coming basically today, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before the rain ends and we see some changes to our weather pattern. SPC has got a moderate risk of severe over parts of Missouri and Arkansas today. So we're going to take this one day at a time. There's a look at the Cape values and you can see why they're forecasting that. Those red values are over 3,000 joules per kilogram. Uh, when we look at the shear, we also have shear. This is the bulk shear from uh, surface to 500 millibars, and we also have some very high values uh, of shear, so certainly things coming together. For day two, which is Monday into early Tuesday morning, you can see the moderate risk has been shifted just a little further to the east than it was yesterday, covering a good portion of the northern two-thirds of Mississippi as well as nearly the entire northern half of Alabama and we do see that uh, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Coleman, Hamilton all are within that area. This is the uh, 21Z or mid-afternoon forecast and you can see why. Cape values once again exceeding 3,000 joules per kilogram so we do have a great deal of instability. On top of that we have a great deal of uh, shear in terms of the bulk shear and uh, so we certainly have all the ingredients. Um, looking out just a little bit further, and this is uh, out to um, uh, Tuesday, you can see that uh, we still see that threat continuing. And uh, with the, the Cape values very high, as well as the shear values very high. We also have the risk of severe, uh, besides the risk of severe weather, we also have the risk of flash flooding. And here's why. There's precipitable water, and everything that is red is over one and a half inches of precipitable water. Uh, so we look at that time frame, that is uh, this afternoon, and then we look out uh, to tomorrow afternoon, and uh, you can see that uh, things are still not changing a whole lot in terms of the principal water, very high, and then we look out into the next afternoon, and indeed we're seeing the precipital water coming down, but uh, it's uh, beginning to fade off. Now, real quick, I uh, want to kind of summarize what's going on here and look at the 500 millibar pattern. This is the pattern uh, this afternoon, and there's the huge closed low over and just to the east of Denver. If you uh, go out to Monday at uh, about uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you can see that the closed low hasn't moved very much. But what's happening is we're getting pieces of energy, these vorticity centers that are rotating around it, these short waves that are rotating around the big low. So uh, they're rotating around and they're helping to enhance the threats of severe weather. 
And then when we get to Tuesday in the afternoon, we see another one coming by that's coming over Memphis. And then when we get to Wednesday, we see yet another one. But by now, the atmosphere is beginning to dry out. So that means we won't have quite as much uh, of a problem. The atmosphere dries out, but we're now going into a double barrel situation where we've got the main low coming out over the Great Lakes, but we've got now another substantial short wave that is coming down into the Texas panhandle. And uh, that could cause some problems, and we see that phase up. So it looks like uh, Thursday and Friday won't be quite as cool, but cooler. And then as we get into the weekend, we could see, I don't know that we'll see record lows, but we certainly could see some abnormally cold uh, weather temperatures for this time of year. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video. Be sure to stay tuned for updates as we move through this entire situation. Um, I don't really know if James will be back tomorrow morning with the next one or not. It depends on how the weather unfolds. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and stay weather wise. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham. <laughs>